um, we're today uh, because of the uh, efforts of uh, Senator Michael Hastings. I talked to uh, Senator Hastings uh, many, many, many months ago, and I talked to him about this project that uh, not only will uh, decrease the amount of time in uh, getting outside agencies to any fire department, but uh, the bottom line is it's going to save lives. Uh, real short, it's CAD to CAD, and Deputy Chief Sinkapami will explain it a little better. Um, so, for instance, if Orland Central has to call a, another dispatch center, whether it's uh, Laraway or Southwest or somebody else, there's a huge time delay. If we need an ambulance right away, we have to call them on the phone, they have to punch it into their computer system, punches out a call. It's a four or five minute delay. This system now will be instantaneous. And it's not only Orland. Right now it will affect 51 different villages in this area, 51. So you look at those departments and you look at the amount of people, it's well over 100,000 people. And like I told Senator Hastings, you know, we're at the forefront, we're the pioneers to something 10 years from now people are going to take for granted because it's always been done. But somebody had to step up, somebody had to give us the money to do that, and Senator, Senator Hastings was the one that stepped up and says, I believe in public service, I believe in public safety, and I'll find you the money. So this doesn't only affect Orland, it affects many, many more. I'll let Deputy Chief Sinkopami explain it a little better. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Hi. Morning, everybody. Uh, really, what the uh, what the software is uh, is uh, it's the uh, it's the interoperability, uh, be able in, in agencies to work with each other. Uh, a good example, and I did say this to the senator as well, is that you could be on the border of Orland Park and Tinley Park, and although those systems are a little bit different. CAD to CAD, when a 911 comes in and is actually uh, um, processed through a center, uh, the CAD to CAD will reach, will be able to see units in, in surrounding suburbs that don't have, actually have the platform that we have now. But when we introduce CAD to CAD, it'll be, able to, it'll be able to pick up those units and the response times will be cut by, by minutes. So you, an example, you could be in Tinley Park shopping and you would be on your cell phone. By the time they would transfer these to various, various dispatch agencies, uh, one agency, if it fell to our agency with CAD to CAD, um, would make the response times a whole lot faster, just just instantaneous. And so I think what will happen is you're seeing this in other states throughout the country. In the in the Midwest region, Orland is a leader, um, and and we work very hard at being and stepping to the forefront of, of every technology uh, piece that we could we could get our hands on, whether it be equipment, uh, apparatus, but in this case, software, 911 software. Right, so that's really what we're doing right now. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. But really, it, 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 the bottom line is, it, it's just going to cut response times, and it, this is an important step to achieve that goal. Thanks, Chief. I'm just going to reiterate that the uh, the main objective here is saving lives, and uh, you know that's what we do in public safety. You know, we're all about saving lives, but in order to do that, you have to get there quickly. If someone's not breathing, you know, an extra two minutes or three minutes is a matter between life and death. So like Deputy Chief Sinkapami said, this dispatch, CAD to CAD, will pick up the closest unit that's available and respond immediately. And like I said earlier, now we have to call the other dispatch centers. And it creates a three to four or five minute delay depending on how, how busy everybody is. This is state of the art and this is something that when I talk to Senator Hastings he says I believe in that and I'll find, I'll find the money and he found the money and uh, like I said we are going to be the leaders in this in this state and eventually like I said ten years from now everybody will be doing this but it takes that first group to take that first step to get it going. And we cannot say enough uh, about how happy we are that Senator Hastings got us the money. Senator, thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. 
I just want to say good morning, everybody. Uh, I know we have a lot of folks here from the office and from our Senior Advisory Council, and obviously we'll have some media members here sharing their thoughts with uh, this program, but I want to say thank you very much to Chief Schofield and the Orland Fire Protection District. I know today we have um, Trustee Craig Schmidt, who's here. Um, we have our village attorney who's here and everybody else, and it's really just an honor. Um, I believe in the Orland Fire Protection District. And I believe in them because what they had to endure during COVID. Um, I saw how many EMTs caught COVID. I saw how they had to respond to households of, of families that were afraid um, when they caught the disease. And uh, they responded, um, and, and the way they treated people in our community was nothing but first class. And uh, first class is what Orland Fire Protection District is. Now, I went down with Chief, and we, well, I'd say about a year ago, we started talking about, what do you need, Chief? What do you need to make your department, what do you need to make your district better? And he, he told me about the interoperability of communication systems between departments. Now, when I was in Iraq, I'll just tell you, I know we have a Vietnam veteran here at Air Force. Um, every minute counted. Every minute counted. If you weren't able to call for close air support, you may not have made it out of there alive. And for fire departments and other fire departments to have to pick up a cell phone in order to call a dispatch center, um, I thought that's just, that, and with today's technology, that shouldn't be the case. And it's not gonna be the case here anymore in Orland Township. I'm very excited about that. 51 different municipalities. It's gonna cross county lines. Um, it's gonna be the model and the example for other fire districts across the state of Illinois. I'm proud to, I mean, finding the money in Illinois sometimes isn't the easiest thing, guys. <laughs> but um, we did it, and uh, I look forward to the success of not just Orland Fire Protection District, but for Orland Fire Protection District to set the example again for the rest of the state of Illinois. Um, I, went, I want to make note of the, the dispatchers down there at the 911 Center. Um, they are, there's about four ladies down there um, that I met with. And we went down and we fielded a whole bunch of calls. And uh, the composure, the demeanor, um, the way they communicated with folks down there. I'll, I'll just make an example of Desiree. Um, she must have fielded, I don't know, about seven calls in a matter of about 15 minutes. And uh, everybody had their own issue on each call, but the way she was so calming, um, and then the way she was able to dispatch assets out to where they had to go was nothing but masterful. Um, and I look forward to this system making their jobs a lot easier and making these guys and girls that serve in our department um, a lot more efficient and effective. Last, I wanna make mention of a special person um, who's not here today. We, we had lost Mr. Roach, who's our fire protection attorney. Jim was a special person to me. And um, he was a mentor, he was an uncle figure, you know, uh, adopted uncle, who was probably one of two people who had my cell phone number in Iraq. Um, I know that he'll be missed in the Fire Protection District, and um, but I know that Megan, um, who uh, helped me get through law school, <laughs> um, Megan will be an awesome um, asset to the district as well. But I just wanted to honor Mr. Roach while I'm here because he was really special to me and my family, and he's a good man. So thanks again, guys. Thank you very much for coming. Chief, thank you. Thanks again. One last thing, we have uh, our trustee Craig Schmidt here, and uh, we would not be where we are today with our board of trustees. You know, they are the oversight. They're the ones that we go to when we need a new program. Uh, they're the ones we go to when we need money. And Craig is one of the trustees who reads everything and asks questions. So um, he's very thorough. But the Board of Trustees, um, they are like the, uh, the, the lost group. You know, we, we get all the credit, and, you know, we're all dressed up and we look nice. But uh, nothing gets done. Nothing gets done in the fire district without the Board of Trustees, and they deserve all the credit. They make the uh, approvals, and uh, they make the uh, procedures, and, and we implement it. So, Craig, thanks for everything you do.